Hey there, I'm Benson from Broker Chooser, and in this video we're going to talk about how you can invest your money. Now, there are quite a few ways to do it, but we'll keep it simple and focus on a straightforward approach. There's no doubt that starting your investment journey is a smart idea. However, a lot of beginners find it very difficult to take action. And then guess what happens? They end up procrastinating. And to be fair, it can be pretty overwhelming to decide what should I invest in? How much money should I invest? And which trading platform shall I choose? We'll cover all these questions in our mini education course. In this video, we'll explain to you in plain English how index funds and exchange traded funds, better known as ETFs work. You don't need a lot of money to start out. $50 is more than enough to see how they work. What we're going to show you is how easy it is to build a portfolio of passive investments. I've just used two words beginning with P, portfolio and passive investment. You may be familiar with their meaning, but just to be sure, let's see what they actually mean. Having a portfolio means we are not going to put all of our eggs into one basket. What we do instead is choose several different investments and these will make up our portfolio. This means we don't rely on a single stock or a business sector hoping that it will do exceptionally well. Put it simply, we don't need to be the next Warren Buffet or someone with a crystal ball. In fact, Warren Buffet has said it several times that a low-cost index fund is the most sensible equity investment for the great majority of investors. By periodically investing in an index fund, the know-nothing investor can actually outperform most investment professionals. Sounds great if you ask me. And frankly, if you are a beginner looking to make your first move on the stock market, you might be overwhelmed by the choices available to you. So it makes sense to invest first in a broad index and not something exotic. But what do I mean by index and index fund? Let's assume that from the available options on the market, an investor picks an S&P 500 index fund as a component of their portfolio. In the case of the S&P 500, for example, the components of the index are rebalanced on a quarterly basis. This means that new stocks that meet profitability and other requirements are included in the index and, as you might have guessed, others are removed. Bigger companies carry a bigger weight in the index. Over time, the weight of individual companies in the index changes. For example, in 1990, the biggest weights were IBM and Exxon. Today, it's Apple and Microsoft. Of course, this doesn't mean that you would need to buy and sell shares when these changes to the index called rebalancing happens. It's the fund manager's duty to replicate the index and keep it up to date. Of course, the S&P 500 is just one index fund, a very popular one, I should say, but there are a lot of other index funds as well. If you buy a German stock market index fund, you'll be a part owner of many German companies, such as Volkswagen. Do you need to handpick Volkswagen? No. It's part of the index because the company is a major player on the German stock market. This is called passive investing because the investor passively follows a market index. Some folks like to call this a lazy portfolio. That's because you don't need to devote a lot of time to maintain once it's set up. I like to call it an autopilot for investments. Not because Volkswagen can be set on autopilot, but because you don't actually need to make a choice on which individual companies to include and at what price to buy and sell them. So, just to recap our first video, if you buy into an index fund, your investment will have the same performance as the market that the index fund tracks. Investing in a collection or a portfolio of broad-based indexes will give the investor an average market result. An average performance doesn't sound too appealing, but it's pretty cool when it comes to investing. That's because, based on publicly available data, active managers tend to underperform these indices in the long run. That is not to say that investing in index funds will always yield the best results. Don't forget that index investors aren't immune to market crashes or corrections either. By definition, a passive investor will not sell during a downturn. This means he or she will have the chance to benefit from an eventual rebound. This, in my opinion, is a positive. 
By contrast, active investors and traders often feel the need to overtrade in a downturn. This may end up hurting their overall returns in these stressful times. But what are the alternatives? Why didn't we mention ETFs? How do I choose my broker? These are all very relevant questions and we're going to take a look at them one by one in the next videos.